I want to talk about Adolf Wolfley today. And at first I'm a bit uncomfortable talking about him as he behaved in such disgusting ways towards children. However, this is an interesting instance where we should separate the physical creative works from the artist's biography and admire it as an impressive projection of the psyche. So let's go for it. So Adolf Wolfley was born in Switzerland, the youngest of seven boys. He was born into in a difficult life with difficult circumstances. Uh, his father was abusive and died when he was five. And then his mother tried to, she worked hard as a seamstress to support the family, but then she also died when Wolfley was 10. So he spent the rest of his childhood moving through foster homes and working in random jobs around Switzerland. So by 1890, at the age of 26, he attempted to assault two young girls and he was convicted and imprisoned. And then again, a few, a few years after his time in prison, he assaulted another child and he was then committed to a mental asylum where he spent the remaining 35 years of his life. So during his time in the asylum, Wolfley was diagnosed with schizophrenia and suffered hallucinations, psychosis and rage. And after his admission into the asylum, his condition reportedly grew worse and he was frequently attacking the guards and destroying everything he could get his hands on. So due to this, Wolfley spent much of his time in complete isolation, which is pretty fair enough. His psychiatrist, Walter Morgan Fowler, described Wolfley's state in an account that also reveals the disregard psychiatric patients underwent at the time. He said, Wolfley ran around, stormed, broke, tore and demolished everything he could. He soiled himself and those who approached him. And in brief, he created an uproar that he had to be locked up in his cell for weeks at a time, naked with a pile of seaweed. So that's a pretty bizarre situation. So four years after his initial confinement, Wolfley began to draw. And this process of image making marked a turning point in his behavior, keeping him mostly calm and distracted. So the doctors began to take notice and given him weekly rations of pencils and paper to reduce his outbursts. So even though he had never shown an interest in art before 1899, he developed impressive creative abilities, producing over 25,000 pages of unique and fascinating imagery. So most of these works, the works from his earliest years were lost. But over 1,600 illustrations and 45 volumes of an autobiography survived. After his psychiatrist, Morgan Fowler, realized Wolfie's creative brilliance. For the first time, a doctor recognized that a patient could be of great importance to the art world, despite his mental illness. And his account of Wolfie's life, characterized by trauma, deviance and madness, became a prototype for the outsider artist's image. He has since become known as the quintessential outsider artist. So this account of Wolfie's life by Morgan Thaler was published in a book called Madness and Art, The Life and Works of Adolf Wolfie in 1921, a year before Prince Orange's more comprehensive Artist Years Mentally Ill, which is a topic I discuss in another video. I would advise it very much if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So the writer David McLagan suggests that Morgan Filer intended his title to pose a question, to pose a challenge. He wrote, Here was a man who elaborated a complete personal mythology in words and images. Why simply because he was diagnosed as a psychotic should he not be given credit for being an artist? And this is an interesting question. And it's not something that we we battle with today as we probably believe that people who are insane are more creative in most instances. So in the first years of his artistic journey, Wolfley worked mainly on random single page compositions with limited drawing supplies, developing a unique style of dense and intricate fractal designs using high quality draftsmanship. His pieces were fantastical, telling stories through unique and complex visual, musical and written vocabularies. His creative imagery consisted of two dimensional forms graphic elements which repeated themselves consistently. For example, the snail, the steam propeller ring, and ring of bells. But also one of the most striking motifs that arose in many of his works is the vogelie, a little bird often interpreted as a sexual symbol and the protector of Wolfie's alter ego. In addition, Wolfie obsessively depicted faces in most of his works. These motifs evolved through the years. However, it is suggested that they represent Wolfie himself, the voices in his head, and the people from his life, either imagined or real. So the art historian Colin Rhodes describes how Wolfley's work is characteristically horror vacu. He writes, 
Every part of the sheet is filled with representational and decorative elements, including musical notation and text. So this, despite the extraordinarily complicated nature of his work, Woefully worked spontaneously without advanced planning in the way that is similar to many outsider art productions. Morgenthaler described, His method of work conveys the impression of urgency, of an internal necessity. Woefully seems to follow a law to obey, to obey the ineluctable. He almost never takes a break. As soon as one sheet is finished, he immediately begins another. Ceaselessly writing and drawn. If one asks him on the outset what he intends to draw on a sheet, he will sometimes answer hesitantly, as if to... As if it was self-evident that he's going to draw a giant hotel, a high mountain, a great goddess or whatever. But often on the other hand, he cannot even tell you what he wants to draw. When he is about to start, he does not yet know, but he will have to wait and see. Wolfley is in many ways kinesthetic. He thinks with his pencil. So in 1908, Wolfley began to work on his large narrative collection. This opus contained five main groups of themes that describe that describe different periods of his life as well as elements of his delusional creations. So the first one is called From the Cradle to the Grave from 1908 to 1912. The second one is Geographic and Algebraic Books from 1912 to 1916, Books with Songs and Dances from 1917 to 1922, and Funeral March 1924 to 1928. So it would be ridiculous to try and go through all of these right now. So I'm just going to give you a brief, brief introduction to the first book. So Wolfley's first epic consists of over 2,970 pages of text and 752 illustrations, bound by Wolfley into nine separate books. The narration takes the form of a travelogue whose primary hero is a boy called Doofy, a name, a nickname for Adolf. In this tale, Doofy travels worldwide, transforming his miserable childhood into an exciting story of daring adventures and discoveries. He writes of and illustrates himself meeting royalty and traveling to places he has never physically been often referring to himself as a king or an emperor. Being seen as a king or an emperor, it's quite, it's a huge contrast from his real life. So this text is accompanied by a large selection of colour drawings, which have, had, which have a close relationship to the story and serve to illustrate it. So these drawings include maps, portraits, scenic representations, or pictures of anthropomorphic beings, such as laughing, flying, or talking flowers, fruits, or animals. These illustrations mark the first appearance of the bird motif, consisting of, consistent of an elongated bulge with two legs and a full stop and a semicolon for a face. I've just picked these two images here, which I think are quite interesting, called Mental Asylum Band Cops from 1910 and Giant City Band Walt Hall. So they're quite similar, except the first image here is centered around a rhombus and the second here is more like a mandala with a circle in the center. So Wolfley died in 1930 at the age of 66 in his cell at the Waldo Hospital. After a lifetime of poverty and obscene crimes, he channeled his pain and perversion into creative configurations that inspired the development, the progression of the art brew outsider art movement. Wolfley's art marked a turning point in art criticism, as he was the first celebrated artist who became known from inside an insane asylum. So yeah, Adolf Wolfley. He's very well respected, very famous, and I would advise keep looking into him. And there will be, during March, I will be posting a video on outsider art so keep tuned for that